You're such an asshole. Banging out more work. Because that's what I do. I, contrib I contribute to GDP. That's what economists do. Actually, economists tell other people how to contribute to GDP and no one listens to them. And I don't blame you because most economists don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Anyway, hey Aaron, I hope you are well. This is a video request. Six months ago, my engagement ended and I was in a downward spiral, quitting my job and dropping out of grad school. A few months later, I got a job as a financial analyst at a big corporation. That is a quick recovery. I also got back into school and have one class left to graduate. I have bought a house and got a tenant to help cover my 15-year mortgage. <laughs> this is like, uh, you're like, oh my God, it's crap. Oh my God, I got my act. I mean, this is the quickest recovery I've ever seen in the history of recoveries. The only other debt I have is $10,000 I borrowed from a good friend to push my down payment above 20%. I'll pay that back from the money I'm getting from my brother for the student loans I have paid off for him a year before my engagement went to shit. Uh, I'm afraid to get my heart broken or fall in love with a gold digger again, which has made dating a genuine drag, but I also remember how stressed I was when I worked two full-time jobs and went to school, you know? So I spent my free time getting in better shape, studying for the CPA exams, and hanging out with friends. Dude, you, I don't know why you need help from me. This is this is how you recovered. This is how you come back fighting. You you got knocked down. You came right back up, and now you throw you landed a bunch of punches. I just turned 29, so I don't have time to dick around anymore. Yes, you do. You're wrong here. Let's stop right here. You have plenty of time to dick around because this is the blessing that God or whoever you want to believe in has given us men. We age like fucking scotch, man. It's great. It's fucking awesome. It is. There is zen and balance and equilibrium in every aspect of the world. Physics, laws of physics, equal opposite outcomes. Um, economics, equilibrium. Prices always change, supply and demand. And the sexes as well. Biology. Women are given all of their power early on up front. They piss it away. Most of them don't capture a man by that time, but men do not get the power until they're about 30. And you're not even 30 yet. You're just, you are right on the precipice, dude. And your your stock is only going to go up from here unless you get, you know, horribly injured or, or, or uh, malformed or something. Um, you, you are about to get your CPA. You are 29. You have a house. You got a job. I mean, shit, I wish when I was like, destroyed I recovered as quickly as you did but you have plenty of time to fuck around okay a 50 year old man can not always but can date and court a 25 year old girl if he wants and he's in shape and he, I mean you gotta you can't just be some fat fuck um but you you have all the time in the world welcome to being a man I'm often disappointed angry and frustrated at myself for making such massive mistakes again taken advantage of in the past I fear that if I forgive myself, I'll make the same wrong moves and hurt myself again. How does one let go of their failures but still learn the hard-fought lessons that come from them? You have answered your own question. You, do you remember your ex? Do you remember the hell you went through? See, I don't think it's, it's, it's a given. The fact you live through it means you're never going to forget that. There's no way... Even if you tried, you could be as stupid and naive as you were, say, like when you were 25 or 20 or whenever it was that you got engaged with this girl. There's, there's, no, there's no way you're going to make the same mistakes. You'll make completely new spectacular ones, but not the same ones. It's almost, it is not almost, it's identical too. Like, um, you know, you catch the measles, uh, then you're immune to the measles or the chicken pox or whatever it is where you had to go kiss Susie Johnson and, and then you got the measles too and when you're a little kid. You're inoculated. You're immune to it. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to hurt, but it's going to hurt nowhere near as much. Plus, you're also very savvy. You know what to look for. There's no way the hell you went through, you're going to forget it. And therefore, you're not going to make the same mistake. It, it's scorched into your mind. It's at the front. It's right here. This is all from here back. That's all. Look out for saber-toothed tigers. And damn, does that cloud look low? Is that a tornado? From here forward, though, that's what you've accumulated knowledge-wise. And that's at the forefront. You are totally aware of the mistakes you made. You're not going to make the same mistake. The, the forgiving yourself, that's interesting. 
because I don't know why you feel guilt over it. Every and, and I guess the way to forgive yourself is to look. Nobody bats a thousand. Nobody. You are going to make a mistake. You're going to make many mistakes. That's human. Stop trying to be perfect. You're, you're trying to, you know, how do I forgive myself for not being perfect? Nobody's perfect. Nobody. Now, that's not what we should aim for. Or they say, ah, man, I fucked that one up. I didn't achieve that. But so what? You had a, 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 an engagement fall through, which is a big thing. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, everybody fucks up. Oh, dude, could I tell you, look, half the reason asshole consulting is so good as what it is. Because I fucked up. It's not because I'm... It, it's quite the opposite. It's like, dude, I have gone through the trenches of fuck up a dream. Uh, so I could tell you kids, younger people, not kids, but younger men, how not to do it. And, and the definition of success is replacing bigger problems with slightly smaller ones. Or in your case, replacing big fuck ups with slightly lesser fuck ups. You will continue to fuck up. You will continue to not be excellent or achieve perfection. Don't worry. That's life. So stop beating yourself over the past, which that's the way it went, and learn from it to make your future better. I forgot who it was. It was the podcast The Hanging Chads. Check them out. The Hanging Chads. Good podcast. I don't know if they're talking to Rollo or somebody else. It wasn't Rollo. They're talking to somebody else. And that was that the concept that the past does not exist. Your past does not exist. And what they meant by that is you can't, you know, like if I want to go to Milwaukee, I can go to Milwaukee. It's there. If I want to go to uh, the Disney World, it's there. You cannot go to your past. Your past does not exist. It's not a place you can go to. It's not a place you can recapture. It's nothing you can relive. And, and not that you shouldn't learn from it, but you can't go back to it. It does not exist. The only thing that matters is your future. And so even though you fucked up in your past, or maybe you didn't even fuck up. I mean, have you thought about that? Maybe the girl you were engaged to was a grade A cunt? Hmm? Possible? Neither here nor there. That is in the past. Now, all that matters is going forward into the future. You cannot go back there. So I wouldn't let that ruin your future. I would certainly draw lessons from the past to ensure your future is better. But all you have is the future. It doesn't matter. Your past doesn't matter. Not that, not that you shouldn't you know, let it form you as an adult going forward. But the past, you cannot go back. So let go of it. Right? It, 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 it's utilitarian, Machiavellian, but it's also 100% true. There is no past. I mean, there is. You learn from it. But <clears throat> in terms of what you can functionally do about it, nothing you can do about it except learn. And you have learned. And how do you forgive yourself? I, well, I, I, I understand. Well, everybody just fucks up, you know. So it's like, oh, I'm going to go murder and rape little children. Oh, I forgive myself. The Lord will provide. Oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm not talking about that. But as long as you remember what happened in the past and draw lessons from it and change that into actionable principles that you follow, that's then you learn. You're never gonna you're never gonna make that mistake again. Like I said, you get the measles once or chicken pox, whatever it is, you're immune to it. You're never gonna get it again. And there are mistakes I've made in the past, horrendous mistakes. I'm never gonna make them again, just because I know it's just you know that's, that's how simple it is. It's not even a thought. So I think you're getting a little too hard on yourself. Um, you know, I fear that if I forgive myself, I'll make the same wrong moves and hurt myself again. You won't. You won't. I mean, don't get lackadaisical about it. I mean, say, okay, what did I learn from that? Okay, don't stick my dick in the pencil sharpener. Okay, well, we learned. <laughs> I don't think you'll do that again. Um, how does one let go of their failures but still learn the hot fought lesson? Well, you, I, don't, I don't think you can do anything but. I don't know how you don't learn the hard fought lesson. They're, they're ensconced in you. The real way to tell if you've learned your lessons is when the same situation will present itself, which rarely happens in life, but every once in a while it does. But it will present itself to you again, and then you're just going to say, oh, do I remember the insane pain and agony I suffered? And I'm going to choose option B instead of A like I did before? Am I going to choose option A again? You're not going to choose option A. It's just, it's just not going to happen because you actually have self-respect and you like yourself. That's basically it. 
So, but dude, based on <clears throat> if you were some kind of drug addict or this or that, and you were rambling about, I'd worry about you. But the fact you recovered like that, you got a job, you're not drinking, you're not doing drugs, you got a mortgage, you're, you're paying off your, your brother who you bailed out or you assisted or you didn't bail him out. You're studying for your CPA. Holy fucking shit, dude, I'm not worried about you. I'm not going to lose sleep over you. And least of all, you should not lose sleep over you. Um, but yeah, going forward, wait for the situation to present itself again. And I almost guarantee you, you're not going to make the same mistake. You're just not. Like, I dated a really super hot redhead who was a royal, like... They went to labs and they took all these cunts and then they squeezed all these cunts out so they had pure extract of cunts and then they reformed her into pure extract of cunt. And that was the girl I did. I'll never date a girl like that again. Never. And I don't even worry about like, oh my God, if a hot little cunt comes up to me and acts all cunty, will I go out? No, I, I, I won't. Maybe I'll bang her, but I'm certainly not going to go out with her. And you're not going to make the same mistake. So don't worry about it. And on top of it, you're 29. You got plenty, dude, you have so much time. Don't worry. Not to be, again, don't become lazadaxical about it, but you, you're not, it's not over. It's just beginning for you. Trust you, me. It's just beginning for you. So, all right, that's it. You guys got questions, go talk to America's older brother over at assholeconsulting.com. Spread the good word. October is Asshole Appreciation Month. So tell everybody about me so I can make more money. I don't have to work a real job ever again. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.